Welcome back to Creepy Kitty Creations. I have a fun video for you today. Today I'll be doing a bug collaboration with some other doll YouTubers. It's gonna be great. But I have a little bit of a secret to confess. Come a bit closer. Bit closer? I'm terrified of bugs. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you are, but we'll think of something. Let's come up with something cute. So we have Lady Dynamite Creatures. I could do that DIY. Josephine's Creatures. Jackie O. And Enchantarium, who have all made excellent bugs. But what should I make? I quite like praying mantis, but they scare me. So I thought maybe I could make a flower mantis. She, they look so cute and aren't as scary. Let's get started. So I thought a Venus doll would be the best for a praying mantis because she already has some really striking features and her ears look like leaves. Aren't they pretty? I've never worked on this doll before. This is going to be fun. So we're going to do the same prep as I always do, cutting off all of the hair and taking her face off with acetone. I've just sped through that. Um, I spray painted her off camera Although I don't think I'll use this particular spray paint again, it was a bit of a pain to work with. I wanted to start with the face up this time because her outfit is going to be quite complex. And frankly, I was just really looking forward to doing her face. I wanted to keep with Orchid Mantis colours, even though I want her to be inspired by all types of flower mantis, Manti. Hmm, I wonder which one that is. Mantis, Manti, what do you guys think? Um, so I'm just going to start off with some pale pink pastel. I want her to look almost like an opal because the Orchid Mantis have such lovely white pink, almost opalescent skin. Although their faces are very, very structural, almost like an exoskeleton. So I think I want to incorporate that somewhere too. So I'm hoping this blushing will make it, will just soften that look a little bit. So now let's sketch on that exoskeleton. I'm just doing this with a light green watercolour pencil. So the main reason why I wanted to go with a mantis, other than the fact that a flower mantis is the least scary bug I could think of, is the first novella I ever wrote actually has a scene with a praying mantis in it, so I felt really close to that particular type of insect, but just the normal ones, they really creep me out, I absolutely hate them, so I thought this would be a good way to do the type of insect that I feel like I have a close affinity to without being creeped out. <laughs> I'm adding in some light green blushing just to add some shading to those lines. Maybe give it a bit of depth and dimension. I'm really just experimenting here. I didn't go in with a, a set plan on how I wanted her face to look. I'm kind of winging it and it's my first time working on a face that's been painted. So that was definitely a bit of a challenge. Some of the pastels I found came out a bit muddy and it was really frustrating trying to get rid of that, that just underlying muddiness. Not the look I was going for. But it seems to have turned out alright so far. A lot of this hair is just trying to bring out some of that pink blushing, add a little bit of depth to the inner corner, going in with a slightly darker pink. It was quite difficult to build up colour on this particular surface. And going in with some lightish pink Perlex powder to give her skin that opalescent shimmer. Thank you. 
and going in with our next after another layer of Mr. Super Clear. The colours definitely are laying down a bit better now. Just adding some more blushing to her cheeks. It was a bit too subtle for my liking. And doing some fun angular eyeshadow. I at first I wanted to keep it really soft and light, kind of like what you'd see in Sweet Lolita. But the more I thought about it, the more structural the praying mantis looked. So I thought that this would fit her better. And now I'm just sketching in her eyes a bit darker and um, getting more structure to it. There wasn't really much of an eye shape before. Um, I was pretty much focusing on using soft pastels. So just bringing out the eye shape with a pinkish peach watercolour pencil. It's really hard getting them symmetrical. I have to say that is my least favourite part of the face up. I kind of wanted to give her like a half lidded look because I haven't really done that on a lot of dolls so I wanted to challenge myself um, and as contrast because usually praying mantis, praying mantis have really really big wide open eyes so I kind of wanted to do the opposite of that and do a doll that was sort of half her eyes half closed sort of a far off wilf a listless look we'll see how it goes hopefully it turns out okay <laughs> praying mantis eyes especially the orchid mantis are quite interesting and I was quite looking forward to trying them because they're actually mostly white and they don't have what I would consider a normal iris they just sort of have white with a few little shades of green and pink with a tiny black dot for a pupil. So I wanted to try and recreate that look but with a proper iris. Um, I originally wanted to give her completely white eyes but it just looked a little bit odd. <laughs> going in with a black watercolour pencil I originally was going to give her very light eyeliner either in a white or a dark pink but it didn't look quite right and I noticed that the praying mantis does have a bit of black surrounding their eye so I thought that that would tie in quite nicely and give the eye a little bit more structure not, not look quite so washed out Green pastels, it seems, doesn't like to lay down colour very opaque. It, it's always quite translucent, so it's quite hard to get the right vibrance of colour here with pale green pastels. You know me, I love an interesting eyeshadow look. <laughs> mm. 
I'm trying to make these colours a bit more vibrant with some watercolour pencils. Um, I'm not very good at getting it to fluff out nicely though, so I was trying to use a Q-tip to fluff it out a bit. I uh, worked okay, but I think I still need to practice a bit more. And the lines for her uh, sort of exoskeleton look weren't too defined, so I'm wetting my paintbrush and going over with the same pale green watercolour pencil and then just wiping a little bit off with a q-tip so that it's not too dark and is just adding a bit of depth to what's already there. I actually filmed this face up about the same time as my uh, black eyed boy and Rin, so I'm sorry about the blurriness. Um, I still hadn't figured out that my camera was on the wrong setting, but I promise it'll be better later in the video. I got a new mount for it, so <laughs> hopefully this will make it easier to see and it will stop focusing on my hand so much. Still just darkening up those pasta those pink pink pastels around her eyeshadow. And going in with a wet paintbrush with black watercolour pencil to really make that eyeliner pop. Adding a few white highlights to her eyelid and around the exoskeleton. And adding some highlights to her lips. It was about this stage I started hating one of her eyes because she looked a little bit cross-eyed so I blocked it out with white watercolour and basically started again. So while that dried I uh, blushed the body and I really wanted to do what the Orchid Mantis has in that they start out with a pink gradient with bits of green in it. I think it's so pretty and I really wanted to bring that out on her body. But keep, also keep it kind of subtle because the colours aren't very vibrant on an orchid mantis or on any of the flower mantis um, from what I could see. Apparently there are like 20, between 25 and 50 different species of flower mantis and they're all just beautiful. One of them I saw it had little flowers all over its body. It, it was quite amazing. So I've coloured in her eyes with some green and pink watercolour pencil and I'm just going over that with some wet watercolour pencil to get that pink and green looking eye. Just adding some lines, adding a bit of detail. And sorry my stupid hand keeps getting in the way. I'll try and be better at that I promise. Now I'm just adding a little bit of black pastel to the pupil just to fluff that out a little bit make it a bit softer and then the part that I think makes the biggest difference adding a bit of black pastel along the eye just under the eye eyeliner to add some shading to base to the eyeball I think it makes a really big difference um, Especially if you want to go for a more realistic look rather than say something a bit more anime style or cartoonish. 
and now I'm just adding the eye shines, catch lights, and just making some thin lines along the eye as highlights. I usually use watercolour pencil for this, but this time I actually used a very thin acrylic paint uh, just to try it out and it actually worked very well. So I'm going over the highlights for her exoskeleton as well just to bring those out. For some reason the watercolour pencil didn't want to go down as vibrant as it usually does. So just a final bit of shading to her lip. And we can gloss her lips and eyes. And her face is done. So this is, um, I actually did the wig, wig cap off camera um, and before she was painted so her face isn't done here but I used synthetic hair and made wefts and I, this time I tried gluing them on with hot glue to see how that works. I've heard it's a lot quicker and it really did hold very well. Um, although the boil wash did affect the paint on her face the spray paint so um, do be warned <laughs> so now she can have a bit of a haircut I've already styled her hair in wee little pigtails and done a braid so I just want to sort of wrap those around make them really detailed and add these little little bobbles to her braid because when I thought of flower mantis and the soft flowery look the first thing I thought of was Lolita and specifically the sweet Lolita that's inspired after Rococo fashion with a bonnet and little flowers everywhere and frills. I just think that kind of look would be perfect for a flower mantis. So I wanted her hair to suit that kind of look and be really cutesy and have flowers in it. So I'm just going to hot glue some fake flowers to this piece of ribbon. I don't know why I I just I don't like hot gluing things spe like specifically onto the hair. Um, I guess it's maybe it's because it's permanent and I'm afraid I won't like it or it might melt the hair or I'm not I'm not sure. I, do, I quite li I like making dolls that can be modified and taken apart. So I wanted this to be able to be removed if need be. Uh, so I just hot glued points of it onto the hair ties so then it could easily be removed but we still get that really cute flowery look in her hair. I also thought with pigtails and them being bobbly they also look a little bit like antennae. What do you think? I'm also going to make her a, a flower or sort of half crown to go inside her bonnet so that I don't have to glue the flowers onto her head or onto the bonnet. These can just sort of clip into her hair and the bonnet can sit on, on top. So I made, there we go, just like this. I'll show you how to make the bonnet later. So I'm just going to trim that down so that it doesn't get too big and bulky and we're going to glue all of these on. Virtually the same way as I did for my Child of Nature doll repaint. Um, my fingers really hurt after all the hot glue. I seem to manage to get all of it on my finger instead of the flowers. I always burn myself, but it's always worth it for the final result. Part of this doll's inspiration was also from Don Bluth's Thumbelina specifically when like the dress and outfit that she's wearing when she goes to the beetle ball i think it's so cute and i had that song stuck in my head during this entire repaint <laughs> and it's done So it fits on like that and we've just put some pins in it. It's looking cute. I'm so happy with how that turned out. I'll make the other flower for her here off camera and now we can make the bonnet. So it's, there's actually only two pieces and you cut two of each so that you get a lining. So first things first I'll cut out some it's sort of like clear plastic sheet and that's to give the bonnet part 
a bit of structure because um, it's just a bit too floppy if it doesn't have that but first we're going to take bo both pieces stitch them together the wee bonnet half and then the cap that goes at the back of your head it's a little bit long so I'm just going to trim that there I'm just going to straight sew that across on both pieces and so that we have two of the same pieces and you'll want to put those good sides together always universal rule good sides together but I have forgotten that on occasion <laughs> it happens to us all and so now I'm just going to pin around the bonnet because we'll want to we'll want to stitch that entire surrounding but first if you want the ties to be neatly um, put, sewn in with the bonnet you want to put them facing inside that's very important because when you flip it right way out you want them to be facing the inside of the bonnet so we'll just catch those in with some pins like so it, it looks wrong with them facing inside but I trust me it will work out there we go so before we turn it right side out you want to ease the seam because it's a circle so that just involves doing tiny little cuts around where you've sewn being very careful not to cut any of your stitching and that just lets the seam breathe a little bit so that when you turn it right side in you won't get any weird harsh look looking pokey lines or corners you just want to push those all out like so then we're going to put that bit of card inside. It gives it a lot more structure. <laughs> See, not floppy at all. Looking good. So we're going to pin that in place. And for a neatened edge, we're going to tuck these edges in and pin them so that we're basically top stitching so that that gets a nice neatened edge it's a little bit fiddly but um, definitely worth doing it looks really nice and tidy once it's done so you want to sew along there around there and especially along that border to keep that card encapsulated so off camera I gathered some some lace and I've just pinned that on I'll stitch that onto the bonnet off camera and I also put some lace on the inside of the bonnet to cover the seams but first she needs some antennae so I'm going to thread some beads onto some wire making sure to cap it with a large bobble at the end so that she gets sort of cute beaded Lolita style antennae just put a blob of hot glue there to hopefully keep them on there it always seems just my luck I I put glue at the end of things and I still manage to snap them and have to rethread them so I thought these would look really cute on her bonnet so I'm just going to hot glue those in place looking cute although they don't want to stay up so I'll finish hot gluing the second one and I'm going to cover up the glue used to keep them more upright and I'll cover them with some fabric roses we know the rules of Lolita more is more is more if the more lace ruffles bows and flowers the better <laughs> And now for her wings, the part I was least looking forward to. I got some of this Angelina foil and I started making the wire like I did for my mermaid tail, only to find out that this was not actually Angelina foil and it did not adhere to itself. So I kind of had to improvise. So I used a ton of PVA glue, put some glitter all over the wings, put more PVA glue over the entire wing um, which gave the whole thing a really unified look so that you didn't see any brush marks of PVA glue and they actually came out really nice I was pleasantly surprised they kind of look like that opal color I was going for for her face so I'm going to glue the top of the wings to the bottom of the wings with some hot glue 
I'm, I don't, I'm not too worried about them not being movable this time. Uh, compared to my succubus wings, which I really wanted to be poseable. So I'm just gluing some magnets onto the end of the wings. Although these weren't strong enough to keep the wings held upright on her back, they just kept wanting to flop back down. So I'm going to place a secondary magnet after I... There we go, we've got one on the corset there. And a secondary magnet up there to keep the wings upright. Like so. So now they can just clip onto her back. So for her clothes, I made her underskirt and her cage bustle off camera. Because I wasn't sure whether it was going to actually work. I was totally winging it. I made the base of her bodice off camera as well, again because totally winging it and so I then just need to cover everything, make it look cute and gather some lace and ruffles and just pretty much applique them to the top of the corset. And I find everything easier hand stitching so I did it all by hand. looking cute but not quite finished the top is looking a bit meh so I found this cute lace trimming I thought it would look really sweet at the top of the corset and some of this lace would look cute at the bottom so I sewed that on off camera and this is how it looks so now for the skirt I was totally winging it this pattern yeah <laughs> so I pretty much just gathered it at the top there because I want it to puff out quite a bit on either side since it's a rococo style skirt I wanted two overskirts on the side with an underskirt at the at the front that looks like it's on a different layer so I've already finished the one side of the skirt so I'm doing the second one now I want them to match so I'm just trying to replicate what I did on the first one which was totally experimental so I'm just pinning and tucking and getting it the same shape as the first one It took a bit of doing, but I got there in the end. So before I stitch all of that on, I'm also going to pin on some of this lace. Uh, so then I basically don't need to sew everything twice. And just put that around the entire edge of the skirt like so and just stitch that on and I've also started stitching on some of the lace this is all just normal lace gathered stitched and made cut to size um, I made a little ruffle out of some pretty fabric you'll probably also recognize this from the child of nature custom if you've seen that video so I was just making use of all the fabric that I had left over. So I'm just going to stitch all that on off camera. And it ends up looking like this. I added some wee roses um, with the wee loopies because I thought it looked very Rococo style. So now we just have to stitch these skirts to the bodice right around here like so and I wanted the puzzle to be able to peekaboo out at the back because a lot of orchids have that nice deep pink in little amounts on the flowers so I wanted that to sort of show through and to kind of hide it with a bustle so I'm using this sheer fabric so that it will, it will cover it and make it look neat but you'll still be able to get some of that color through um, this part was a little bit inspired by Christine Daae's dress in The Phantom of the Opera. That's got a beautiful bustle that um, sort of, I guess I'd call it, it kind of bubbles like this one. 
And I think it's, it's beautiful, so I really wanted to try it. So let's, that's a bit big for there. Maybe that will look cuter at the top. What do you think, too much? Oh yeah, definitely at the top. <laughs> Maybe these little ones will look cute there. So I'm just going to hot glue a magnet onto the bustle and then onto the the top bottom of the of the bodice so that can all clip on and hot glue this flower at the top and the little flowers in the middle just to hide those seams. And she is a flower mantis after all. She needs lots of flowers. <laughs> so that just clips on like so. And to keep it from move uh, to keep it from moving, I'm just going to put a little pin at the back so that it can clip onto the skirt easy and removable. Now onto her shoes. I just did a base coat in white. It's quite hard to get the acrylic all on there properly and getting it into those dimples. And then once that's dry I'm going over with a pale pink to match her dress. And because of her shoes, you're not going to see the gradient on her feet. So I wanted to do a green gradient on her shoes to mirror that Orchid Mantis effect. They have a little bit of green, especially on the ends of, would you call them their arms, their hands, their little, their little hooky things? <laughs> and I want them to be a bit glittery like the wings, so I've put some glitter in some high gloss varnish and I'm just coating that over top of the shoe. They weren't quite glittery enough though so after the, I've covered them in the gloss varnish I'm just going to sprinkle some more glitter on it and then finish with another top coat of high gloss varnish once that's all dry. They're so sparkly now. So that's all dry now. And they're looking really cute. They kind of give off little mermaid vibes. What do you think? And we'll stick some wee flowers on there so it ties in with her dress. Now for the stand. I really wanted her to have a pretty custom stand that almost looked like she was in a flower garden. So it's going to be a saddle stand like almost all of my stands because... It doesn't chip paint, it can clip onto, like, you don't need it to clip onto their waist, which half of my Monster High stands don't want to do because the clothing is so thick. So just snap that there and glue it onto the base. I'm just using a plain cardboard base that I bought at my local craft shop. Using plenty of hot glue to make sure that the stand has lots of support and doesn't wobble. And now I'm just making the well, what uh, what will hopefully be the framework for the base of a of a rose bush with these the little twigs sticking out and having little roses all over it. Uh, I think it could look pretty cute. So first I need to see how far for it to stick out because her dress is really poofy. So I think, yeah, it needs to be further out than the actual base. So we'll just put that to the edge a wee bit, stick it out. And we can, we can also bend it into shape if it needs to go out a little bit further. I, 
chose pink wire instead of green wire because I thought it would tie in with her color scheme better even though you don't really get pink stems on roses. But she's Lolita, maybe she painted them pink. <laughs> Okay, let's see how that's fitting. Pretty good, although it does need to go back a bit for it. That's better. We want to be able to see her bustle. And while I was doing this, one of her antennae snapped and I needed to put all the beads back on and re-glow it, so that was a pain. <laughs> so these are the roses that I'm going to use. Um, they're just made out of foam, I think. Also from my local craft shop. But first, let's start with the dirt. Doing a really liberal coating of PVA glue. I always, I love making grass and dioramas for the stands. It's so much fun. So I'm bringing out the tea bag, dried tea leaves that I always use for dirt. Um, we drink a lot of tea in my family, so we just open up the tea bags and dry them out and it makes perfect dirt. It's cheap, it's affordable and recycling and it smells lovely. Dirt from the shops that like, I think we've got one here called Acorn Models in Christchurch that is specifically for dioramas and things. What they charge for dirt is insane. Even like it's just look-alike dirt, it's not even real dirt. <laughs> so I'm covering all of the hot glue marks with grass flocking. The same stuff that I'll use for the grass at the base of the stand. Um, just to add, add to the natural look but also hide all the hot glue. So I'm just sticking that on with PVA glue. And time for the flowers. I had originally wanted to do an orchid, but I unfortunately ran out of time. So I thought since she's a flower mantis, any form of flower, roses, I, I thought would look quite nice. And using these velvety leaves as well. making sure they don't fall off. That's the stand mostly done. I've sprayed the base with a bunch of PVA glue to keep the, the dirt on there. Now I'm just going doing a few drops of UV resin to make little dew drops on several of the roses. A bit hard to see there but <laughs> they look really nice in real life. And just adding a bit more flocking to cover any glue that you can still see. And now I get to try out my grass, my static grass applicator. You just um, clip this onto something metal and press the on button and shake the grass and it will actually put it standing up through static electricity. It's quite amazing. I was really impressed. So I'm just spraying that with some PVA glue and going over with some pink, I guess you'd call it flocking, it's almost like a powder and it's intended to look like little flowers in a field. 
So I'm going in with some yellow as well because I think that will look quite cute. It's a good way to get the look of flowers without actually having flowers. Although I do want one or two roses over here <laughs> to hide that join. And adding a few more UV dew, dew drops. And the stand is done. It's quite big. <laughs> so now she's finished, we can assemble her and get the final look. And she's done. This is so extra, just total extra Lolita girl. I'm so happy with how she came out. This was such a fun collab to be part of, especially with so many amazing doll artists. And it's quite amazing how everyone came up with very, very unique dolls, very specific to their own style. And you can tell just by looking at them which doll belongs to who. Um, so this was so cool and I probably wouldn't have been able to come up with this doll if I hadn't been given the theme of bugs. So it was nice to be able to come up with something different. I hope you liked her. I'm really happy with how she came out. She's not a creepy bug at all. She doesn't creep me out. So that's definitely good. I can stand looking at her without getting scared. If you haven't seen any of the other bug collab videos please do check them out they are incredible um, please like the video if you liked it don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more and we'll see you next time bye